Hey guys, it's Vic, High Desert Man, and I don't have anything uh, particularly witty or snappy or anything to say about this cigar other than, you hear me say it a lot, I'm really excited, super excited. I, I'm uh, almost as excited for this one as I was for the uh, New American. This is the Crowned Heads Las Calaveras Limitada Edición, actually I think it's Edición Limitada, uh, 2019 in the LC54. Stick around. Alright everyone, how are you doing today? I've had a very weird day, but uh, I've got a I've got a new customer with my my career job that uh, they're just a difficult customer and the last couple days have been really stressful and stuff. So my only my only uh, uh, you know break from this whole thing because it, it's it's just been stressful and a lot of work and stuff has been uh, in the evenings I've been coming out here and working on the new smoke chest. In fact right across the way on the workbench of the lab I'm looking at 10 uh, assembled boxes the the bottoms are assembled I haven't assembled the lids yet my, my goal is to get 25 of them done and uh, you know ready to put on the website by this weekend the, this series started it's an annual uh, release limited edition release it started in 2014 <clears throat> and the whole um, uh, the the premise behind the cigar is to celebrate the uh, celebrate the lives of those who passed in the year before. So this is the 2019. It looks at people who passed away in the cigar industry uh, in 2018. Typically, they've done multiple uh, people on the band. They've recognized multiple people, uh, but uh, last year. They lost someone, John Huber and Mike Condor from Crown Heads lost someone very close to them who was um, uh, Kano, how do you say his name, uh, Kano Osgener, Osgener, I think it's Osgener, uh, he was the founder of CAO International way back when. John Huber and Mike Condor worked for the company I believe for 15 years, it was at least a decade if not 15 years. Um, and and uh, he passed away last June, so a, a year ago, uh, a year ago um, this month. So they're only recognizing him on the band this time. So the band uh, somewhere it's got his initials on it. It's the same Las Calaveras band that they do every year, but every year they kind of mix up the uh, the color format and the 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 band stays the same. The coloring changes. So um, last year's band was freaking gorgeous. It was a chartreuse green band against that dark San Andreas wrapper. And it, the, the contrast, the band was beautiful, but the band contrasted on that San Andreas wrapper was just gorgeous. And the previous years, I wasn't really into the bands. They were, they, uh, from a, they were nice bands, but from a color scheme, they just didn't work like last year's did. And I was wondering this year how are they gonna how are they gonna match up to that because it was a really cool band and I gotta say that this this year they did it with that red and gold. Um, it doesn't strike me quite the same way that last year's did, but it's my second favorite out of the Las Calaveras bands. So like I said, this uh, this series started in 2014, and the the inspiration behind it was the whole Day of the Dead, Mexico's Day of the Dead thing. It was inspired by a zinc etching from a uh, Mexican artist back in the uh, 20th, uh, 20th century, late 1800s, early 1900s, named Jose Guadalupe Posada. And uh, the particular artwork that he did that uh, inspired this series was called La Calavera de la Catri... Le... Wow, gosh darn it. I thought I was going to make it through that. La Calavera de la Catrina. 
uh, and it's basically uh, it, you guys have seen probably a lot of the Day of the Dead type artwork and stuff, but to see the the history because it, the the whole Day of the Dead thing and the and the um, the atmosphere of it really got started with this Jose Guadalupe Posada artist and, and his artwork. And his artwork was kind of, uh, in particular, the Calaveras artwork, which was, uh, or Calavera, which was skulls and bones um, artwork, was what inspired uh, the um, Day of the Dead, or, or what do they call it in Mexico? The Dia de los Muerta. That's what it is. I remembered from memory. That's cool. Uh, I'll throw a link in the description if you want to check out some of this. I found a cool page of this artist. Um, uh, a, a, um, since it was so long ago, his, his, some of his artwork and some of his stuff is uh, public domain type stuff. Uh, and I found a really cool website that uh, shows some of that off. Got the crown heads hat on. Got a couple new crown heads hats that uh, I haven't broken uh, broken out yet. I don't like to sweat in all of them, uh, so I, I kind of wear them different ways. I'm really rambling today, ain't I, guys? Okay, so the wrapper is Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro, which is the first year that they've used that wrapper uh, on this on this uh, series. The binder and filler in Nicaraguan. Uh, undisclosed, just Nicaraguan. Now, the Vitolas, there, it comes in, technically it comes in four sizes, but only three sizes are regular production. The fourth size you can only get in a sampler that they release every year as well. I purchased the sampler to get all four sizes in particular because I wanted this size, uh, and I'll get into that in a minute. So the Vitolas are the LC46, which is a 6 inch by 46 ring gauge, the LC50, which is 5 by 50, it's uh, traditional Robusto, and then this beauty, the LC54, which is 5.5 by 54, and then the Torpedo, which is a 6 and 1 8 by 52. So the sampler comes with one of all four sizes in it, so four cigars. Uh, and then, uh, and I've got a sampler from 2018 that I haven't even opened uh, because I bought a box of the Sublime size. Oh, you know, now that I think of it, last year they had a Sublime. In fact, I think they've a few times they've had a Sublime, but this year they didn't do it. So that's interesting. And uh, sticking with what they've been doing this year, 2019, they've got the same Crown Heads foot band, which is, is new for 2019. So let's, uh, let's peel that foot band so we can... Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Comes right off. I purchased this along with some uh, uh, Four Kicks Mule Kick limited edition 2019 cigars. Because I, I did a review on that one and I absolutely loved it. So I purchased some uh, from Fox Cigar, my place, foxcigar.com. And uh, they threw in some extra stuff, which was really awesome. Uh, all crown head stuff. So uh, I, every seems like every time I do a decent sized crown heads order from them, they always throw in a good mix of crown heads uh, singles, which I freaking love. Not much on the on the body. I have almost exclusively done the deep V for everything the last several weeks because I love this cutter. And I decided to pull out. This is a a vertigo. Oh, you can't even see it. It says vertigo up there on the on the side here. It's called the vertigo phantom, if I remember correctly. This. I don't know how many cigars this stupid lighter has lit, man, but I have had this. I used to carry it in my pocket everywhere. That's why it's so worn. Um, and it's just a cool lighter. So I was feeling nostalgic and thought I would uh, give it a spin. Wow. Okay, the draw is phenomenal. The draw is absolutely where I want it to be. Here we go. By the way, I, uh, I, I get a little bit of sweet tobacco in my mouth on the cold draw. That's about it. 
Oh, come on. Wow, that flame's up there. I had to turn it down a bit because that high altitude fuel... Uh, tell you what, if you got a lighter that... It, I, I just... I'll tell everyone this. Watch Kevin's video and, and buy some of that Purifina. That's what it's called, Purifina fuel. There's two types. They've got the regular and then they've got the high altitude stuff, uh, which is, I think they call it, I can't remember what they call it, but it will, it, it's a hotter fuel. And I turned this sucker down a bit and it's still shooting up there. I decided I'm not talking about the uh, spice through the nose right off the first few draws anymore because it's always it's always a lot more pepper through the nose. Now some you get a lot more and it really punches you, some not, but you got you have to get a good eighth of an inch into the stick or or five or 10 draws through it first and then determine where the pepper's at. Since I'm pretty sure this video is going to come out after I actually get boxes on the website, would you like to see my bottom? <laughs> so hold on just a moment. Right. So I have to, the, it, every, every piece of the box is a separate piece. I have to assemble them all together. You can see there all the little puzzle pieces and it's that way on all the sides and everything. So each side and top and bottom all come separate. The uh, uh, hinges come separate. The hinges are also wooden. They're really, really cool. Uh, once he gets a regular, a regular guy back in his box factory, Yanko actually had to do all these for me himself, uh, which is why he only sent me 50 of them. But on each side, they say, Hi, Desert Man got a little bit of a desert theme on the back and the hinges will go in those little slots I changed up the uh, front uh, it says smoke chest but I, I use a different font than I, I had a prototype made um, about nine nine or ten months ago I had a prototype made for the original smoke chest kit and I, I used a different font on the front I didn't like it as much uh, and yeah that's um, so this is the bottom. There will be a top, obviously, and uh, i got to put this away now. And once you get in the groove, they actually, <clears throat> they actually go together fairly quickly. Um, there's a clamp. I've got this sort of, uh, it's a, cl a clamp for clamping boxes and stuff. So it clamps all four corners equally and puts equal pressure on it and stuff. I've got five of those, so I put five of the boxes together, clamp them and stuff, let them sit for just a little while to, to uh, set. And then I pull the clamps off, go on to the next one, and then they sit for a while and they, they cure. All right. I'm a little bit in now. See there, and it's got a lot of flavor. Sorry about that break, guys. My phone is still buggered. I like it. <clears throat> I like it a lot so far. All right, there's some there's some good dark roast coffee in there. It's got some punch in the nose. Cayenne sort of a cayenne the uh, there's no <clears throat> there's no tooth on the wrapper it is uh, it is one of the nicest looking crown head cigars uh, that I've seen come out in a while especially last year 2018 crown heads they, they released some really good sticks but most of them were kinda ugly uh, really rustic looking and everything 
This one looks a lot better than anything that came out last year. All right, guys, I'm going to do some work. Go into this for a little bit, and uh, we'll be back in just a little while to talk about my experience and show you my bottom. And we are back. <clears throat> I'm going to get that band off of there before... I've been sliding it back. Luckily, it's on there loose enough I can slide it. I've slid it back quite a ways. And it's going to come off very easily, it appears. I really like the color scheme this time. <clears throat> so I did not cover the pricing on this stick. So let me, let me hit that real quick. So, like I said, it comes in three regular Vitolas and then a sampler pack that includes a fourth Vitola that you can only get in that sampler pack. So each of the three Vitolas come in boxes of 24 and each one was uh, 1700 boxes of each were, were done. For the samplers 2500 boxes were made uh, of four cigars and those go for 50 bucks uh, 49.95. You can find those at foxcigars.com or other places. They uh, The samplers are pretty uh, popular. Uh, the LC46, the, the number always refers to the ring gauge on the Las Calaveras cigars. So the LC46 is 1050 per stick, the LC50 is 1175, and the LC54, this guy, is 1295 per stick. So it's a bit more expensive than last year's Las Calaveras and we're right in a time frame right now where where pretty much the whole industry is raising prices on cigars. It's a really good cigar and my initial impression is that I like it more than last year's Las Calaveras which I liked quite a bit. That's uh, That had a San Andreas wrapper. I love the San Andreas wrapper. This Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro has a lot of flavor. It's really good. For the most part, kind of a unidimensional stick. It had some flavors that came in and out and stuff, but mostly kind of unidimensional. Uh, so initially I got that cayenne pepper, and like I thought was going to happen within 8 or 10 draws, that died down quite a bit and mellowed out. Um, the wasabi in my nose went away pretty quick it's really smooth through the nose although I get a little bit of a bite every now and then and it just started off really woody and earthy just wood notes and earth notes the cigar is constructed very well it holds the ash I've only been letting the ash get about an inch and a half long or so but when I go to tap it off, it takes a couple taps to, well, that one came right off, but it, generally it's been taking a couple taps to, uh, to knock it off. It looks like, looks like I'm starting to tunnel in there a little bit. Now, when I got to the halfway point, kind of got a little bit dry and airy, and it has remained kind of dry and airy, but not in a bad way. It's not airy in that you're not getting any flavor. Uh because there's a lot of flavor and it's definitely started coating my mouth and coating my tongue pretty well so it's it's a, a full body cigar strength medium strength maybe uh, maybe leaning into full strength uh it's it's got some yeah i'd, I'd say it's leaning into full strength for sure uh the balance between the wood and earth notes and the peppers which really died down was a good balance. It was a good mix, and you you kind of got all of it at the same time and throughout the stick. Now, sometimes the woody notes came out more. Sometimes the pepper notes came out a little bit more. Uh, and when I say wood, it really is kind of like a charred oak sort of flavor, and I get a little bit of charriness off of it now. This might sound kind of weird. But uh, I've had quite a few Cubans over my smoking career, if you will. And it kind of reminds me of a few Cuban cigars I've had, but more bold. 
so you, you generally don't come across Cubans that are uh, this strong. But um, yeah, it just kind of reminded me a little bit of, of uh, some Cuban sticks. All right, guys. This has been the Crowned Heads Las Calaveras uh, Edición Limitada 2019. And until the next review, stay rugged.